Now let's quickly take a look at the Cisco routing hardware portfolio. Before I show you the routers though, I want you to think about two things. When you think about a Cisco router, you got SD-WAN routers and you got non-SD-WAN routers. So this is something you have to think about before you make the purchasing decision. SD-WAN is a centralized architecture with a controller. If you wanna learn more about SD-WAN, I will provide a link down below and I'll also provide a link at the top that you can click on and watch my video on SD-WAN. I actually did a bunch of videos in SD-WAN so you'll get to learn a ton. Whereas the non-SD-WAN, standalone routers, old school, kind of slowly going away. Pretty much everybody's jumping on the SD-WAN bandwagon, but something to keep in mind. And then you got a couple of things to consider before you make the purchasing decision. You have to look at the total router throughput. You have to look at what features, If you, for example, if you need advanced security features on top of routing, you're gonna need a beefier router. Interfaces, do you need copper and fiber? How many? What type, single mode fiber, multi-mode fiber? Power, do you need routers with uh, redundant power supplies if they're critical enough? And then scalability, do you need routers that have the ability to grow as your business grows? So with that, let me take you straight to Cisco's website so we can do a quick analysis. So we go to cisco.com, click on products, networking, we click on routers. Once we get to routers, what I want you to look at is view all routers right here. You got a ton of options here. The ones that we are concerned with are branch routers primarily, but look at how many different options you have available to you, including service provider and all that. We're not worried about any of those. What we're worried about are the branch routers and the WAN aggregation and internet edge routers. These are the only two type of routers that we're concerned with for the purpose of CCNA. Now let's go ahead and click on branch routers. Within the branch routers, I want to draw your attention to a couple of things. What you want to focus on is the Cisco ISR. The integrated services router is considered ISR 4K series. That's the series you want to pay attention to and the ISR 1K series you want to pay attention to. This is what Cisco has been pushing a lot lately. The 1900s, 1800, some of these other ones are probably eventually kind of going away. Uh, they're a plus they're for much smaller size networks. ISR 1K is also for much smaller size networks as well and a really robust type of device. And then you got the brand new series that just started. It's the Cisco Catalyst 8300 series edge platform. These are absolutely amazing next gen routers. Very, very powerful. And they're more geared toward like high end branches with a lot of throughput requirements. And next, let's look at the WAN aggregation and internet edge routers. In particular, I want you to look at the ASR or the aggregation services router, ASR 1K right here. And then once again, we got the Catalyst 8500 series showing up here. I think this Catalyst 8500 series is a better fit for data centers than it is for branch because of how big of a monster this series is. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the 4K series. So this is the 4K series. Let's look at the data sheet. You got a ton of different options here. And in particular, right here, we get to see product specifications. So for example, you get to see that Cisco 4221 is where it starts. Then it goes up to 4321 right here. And 4331, 4351. You can see that right below the box is the throughput that it's capable of. With some additional licensing, you can take their throughput to the next level. But be cautious though, especially if you're gonna use them as SD-WAN devices, the throughput might be very limited. And especially if you can also enable security on top, you're gonna have to be very, very cautious with the throughput. And then it shows how many LAN interfaces you got and WAN interfaces. 10 gig ports, how many copper ports, how many fiber ports, and so on and so forth. Now let's quickly take a look at the Cisco ASR 1K series, and I'm gonna pull up the data sheet here so we can review it together. So here's the entire portfolio. As you can see, they have fixed configuration routers as well, but they have a lot of modular routers. So what you get with the ASR 1K series, if if I were to scroll down. So what you can see is, if you look at the ASR1001X, it has 
the ability to go from 2.5 gig to up to 20 gig throughput. You got the next one up is 1002X. That goes from five gig to 36 gig in throughput. Then you got ASR 1001HX. These are high performance. H is for high performance. Goes up to 60 gig, that's a monster. 1002HX goes up to 100 gig. Then you got the ASR 1004 goes from 10 to 40, so on and so forth. So as you can see, ASR routers are more geared toward data center because these are high throughput boxes designed for aggregating connections from a lot of different branch offices because typically at the data center, you're gonna have a situation where you got a ton of these branches that are constantly trying to access data that is located in a data center. And you're gonna have a lot of traffic hitting your data center network from these branch locations. That's where these routers come in. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.